Let's add custom recipe serialization and custom recipe types to the game. Let's see how to do that. All right, we found ourselves back in IntelliJ once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to add custom recipe types to the game. Now, this might need a little bit of an explanation. So the idea is that, of course, when we look at our tile entity, the lightning channeler, then we basically hard coded in, hey, you have to put in a glass pane here and an amethyst here, and you get a firestone out there. Now, that's, of course, not really the best way to do this. We can basically define a custom recipe that we can then use. So we can basically make a totally normal JSON file, the thing we need to put in the first slot, the thing we need to put in the second slot, and then the thing that it turns into. And now what's really cool is that what we're also going to do is we're also going to basically say, okay, this is the weather that it needs to be in order to craft this item. That is something that's really cool. I hope that this sort of gives you the tool to think about your own tile entity and your own recipes that you might be able to do, because actually implementing this is really not that difficult. A lot of this is sort of boilerplate stuff, which is going to look the same regardless of what type of recipe you're gonna have. We're gonna do this similar to the structures tutorial where I copied over sort of line by line, more or less, and I'm going to explain a few things, but let's start by creating a new package in our tutorial mod package called data. And instead of that package, we're going to create a new package called recipes. Now here we actually need three different things. Now the first thing that we want here is going to be a class, which is going to be an interface actually. And this is called the iLightning Channeler Recipe. There you go. And this will extends iRecipe of type iInventory. And this will need a few things. I'm simply going to copy those over. This is of course available to you in the description below for download. And this is going to be the following things. Number one, a resource location, which is going to be called type ID. And we can get this via the get type ID and then a can fit and a is dynamic method. And that's actually all we really need for the interface here. Uh, then what we want is we want a new class, which is going to be called the light lightning channeler recipe. Now this one is going to be the, let's say, most complex class we're going to do. This is going to implement the iLightning channeler recipe interface, which should be fairly straightforward. We're going to implement all of the methods that are necessary here. So matches, get crafting result, get a recipe output, get ID and get serializer. And we'll do this a piece by piece. So first of all, if you have the gist open or the GitHub repository, you will see that we have an enum in here and we'll actually going to copy this over. This is the weather enum. Now these are the three weather events that we can have inside of Minecraft in this case. And idea being that, well, we can basically get a weather event by a string. So this is a additional method in this enum here. If the string is thundering, then we simply return a thundering. If it is rain, then we'll return rain. And if it's neither of the two, then we return clear here. So this makes it possible to basically convert a string into this, into one of these enums here fairly easily. And the reason we need this is because we want to, of course, read in what the actual weather has to be in order to craft a particular item. Now, we also have four different fields. Now, one of the fields is the ID, then we have an output, we have a non-null list of ingredients. Those are basically the inputs. And then we also have a weather, which is, of course, something that is also being read in. And all four of those, if we actually hover over this, we can say add constructor and then making sure that we select all of them. And then a constructor is going to be built for us. We're actually going to move this down here and make this a little bit different. There you go. So this is actually all we need for the constructor. So the constructor is completely normal. Let's continue with the matches method. So the matches method is very interesting. The matches method, basically, you basically get the invent I inventory and the I inventory is the actual inventory that you have where you craft. The I inventory is the thing that we have opened and now we have the two slots in there. So we can basically call the stacks in the slots. And I will simply copy over the contents of this because they're actually not that crazy. So the idea being the recipe items, we know that this is a list of ingredients. So this simply is a list of items basic. And with ingredients, we can have this, we have this really nice test method in which we can simply put in an item stack and it tests whether or not this ingredient is the same as the item stack. And we can simply say, okay, let's take the zero of slot. So this is gonna be the upper slot in our lightning channeler. If that is equal to one of the recipes here, so in one case, of course, glass pane, then we can continue and we then look whether or not the second one, so this is the slot below. And if that is equal to the second item in our recipe, then we simply return true. 
because if this is true, then this returns true. And matches basically says, okay, if this is true, then we can now proceed to actually craft this item. So get crafting result should be fairly understandable. This is simply the output. Uh, we also need a, an additional method, which is going to be get ingredients. This is this simply returns the recipe items here. We also have the output, which returns output dot copy interestingly enough. And then we also want a, a method of my own making, which is going to return the weather, which is, of course, get weather. This simply returns this dot weather. And then the ID will simply return ID. We also want an icon. This is something that we're going to need maybe a little bit later, but don't worry about it. Item stack dot get icon. And that is going to return a new item stack of mod blocks dot lightning channeler dot get. There you go. And then we want to make something really crazy, and that is the serializer, right? And now on to something pretty crazy. So let's uh, skip the serializer for just a time being. The first thing we want is a static class in here. So this is going to be a public static class for lightning recipe type, which implements the I recipe type of lightning Chandler recipe. And this will simply just override one thing, and that is two string. And this will return lightning Chandler recipe dot type ID dot two string. And there you go. That's all that we want here. And then we need another static class and that I'm actually going to copy over. So this is just this one. And this, as you can see, is called serializer. It extends forward registry entry I recipe serializer. It also implements the I recipe serializer of type lightning channeler recipe. What does all of that mean? The idea being that this simply serializes a JSON file and converts it into a lightning channeler recipe. So let's implement methods. We want the read, the read, and the write method here. And that's all that we really want. Now, the thing about it is that we can serialize this however we want. If you've ever worked with JSON serialization, this is basically just making sure that, okay, this is that, this is this. Let's convert this JSON object into this object inside of our Java class and stuff like that. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm just going to copy the contents of the first read method and we're going to go through this. So what is happening here? So first of all, we're going to deserialize an item. This is something given to us by the shaped recipe class. We can deserialize an item. So we can simply say, hey, get the JSON object with the name output. Output we've not actually seen yet. Usually this is called result in the recipe. But for our case, we're going to call this output. We also have the string weather, which simply gets a string from the JSON utils called weather, fairly straightforward. And then we also have ingredients list. This is the normal ingredients list that we've seen in multiple different recipes already, right? This one has ingredients, for example, as you can see, this is a shapeless recipe and this one have, has a list of ingredients. And this is exactly the same that we're looking for right here. So this is a JSON array and that we then convert basically here into a non-null list. And this is then given over when we create a new lightning channel recipe here with the inputs right here. So the inputs are given here as well as, as you can see, weather dot get weather by string. So this is the reason why we have the string method because we always read this in as a string and then basically convert it and give it over to the lightning channel recipe construct. The second read method gets a packet buffer. Now we do something a little bit different here. As you can see, we simply create the non null list and then read it in the buffer. The output is that read item stack. And then at the end, we simply create a new recipe here as well with the null. Now I'll be completely honest. I am not 100% sure whether or not we need it or where this is used. However, I found that this actually works totally fine. So we're just going to stick with it for the time being. And then the write method is also something not too bad. So we're simply taking a look at, okay, how long is actually the ingredients list? And then we're going to write this to the buffer, right? And then we're going to write the recipe output in there as well. So here we simply just write everything into the packet buffer instead of reading it, right? And those are the three methods. Now, those will look eerily similar regardless of what type of recipe you want to basically implement. So whether or not you have eight or 12 or 24 different slots that you might have, the, what changes here is the number of inputs, basically. This could be here. And if you want to add custom members, that is actually also not that difficult. As you can see, it's literally just this. And then, of course, changing it in the constructor here. So this really shows once again that some solid Java knowledge will definitely help with this. Now, the class here is actually done. And now we need to do one more thing. And that is going to be the mod recipe types. So in the recipes package, let's create a new Java class called mod recipe types. And this one will have 
something that you might have seen before, which is going to be a deferred register uh, of type I recipe serializer question mark. This is the recipe underscore serializer, which is equal to a deferred register dot create forge registries dot recipe serializers tutorial mod dot mod id and of course everywhere where there is a deferred register there is also a public static void register method of type i event bus which is called event bus and then we have the recipe serializer dot register event bus and this is then of course called in the tutorial mod class right below here the fluid so mod recipe types register event bus. Right, and now we want uh, two more things here. So this is public static final, a registry object of type lightning channeler recipe dot serializer. Mm, this is the lightning underscore serializer. Just not not difficult names at all, which is of course equal to recipe serializers dot register. And then the name, I'm going to call this lightning, lightning, making sure that this is written correctly. And this is in the lightning channeler recipe dot serializer serializer at serializer colon colon new right there and then we also want a public static i recipe type of type lightning channeler recipe called lightning underscore recipe which is equal to the new lightning channeler recipe dot lightning channeler recipe type and that is something we actually want to register. So in our register method, we actually need to add something else, and that is the registry dot register with registry dot recipe type comma lightning channeler recipe dot type id lightning recipe. There you go. Is that insane? Yes, it is. But no worries. And then actually, I lied to you. We need to add one more thing in the lightning channel recipe, and that is going to be the serializer right here, and that is going to be the mod recipe types dot lightning serializer dot get and after that has been added the bulk of the work for the serialization actually has been done now we still need to somehow evaluate this in the tile entity so we actually need to change the tile entity up a little bit but in theory the recipes would already be read in of course right now we we couldn't really do anything with them so it doesn't really make any sense to take a look at it right now so we will now actually change the tile entity just a little bit and instead of changing the tile entity the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of all of this in our lightning channel or block so the entire else statement if we're crouching we're going to actually get rid of and then even the if statement if we're crouching we're going to get rid of that as well so this is what i've said in the tile entity tutorial where we've added some you know like special functionality this is actually how a unblock activated method for a normal entity would look like without our special right click functionality uh, but we're of course going to implement something very similar in our lightning channeler tile with the recipes now and the thing is we actually don't need too many things the first thing we want is we actually want to implement an interface here which is i tickable tile entity which then creates the tick method right here so we actually need the tick method and we need two more methods one of them is going to be basically a method that i want this is the uh, private void strike lightning method which basically what is going to simply just spawn a lightning. So if this world is remote, that's not the case, then we're simply going to spawn a lightning. I'm quickly going to copy this over because spawning the lightning should be fairly straightforward. We've seen this a couple of times now. Now this is simply going to be called when we actually craft something. And then that is the next great idea. So this is going to be a public void craft method. And this is going to be called when we craft something. We're basically going to take a look at whether or not we are world that is remote. If that is the case, we're simply going to return and then we're going to call the craft method as well. So basically every tick we're going to evaluate whether or not the insides of the inventory actually match a crafting recipe. Okay, let's actually copy over the first two lines here and let's see what this all means. So we're going to get the inventory from the slots. This shouldn't be a surprise. So basically we're taking the item handler that we have on this tile entity and we're just getting the contents of the slots. And then we're going to see whether or not a recipe exists with the inventory here. And if we go to get recipe, you can actually see that it calls the matches method, which is of course something, if we go back to the lightning channel recipe, exactly this with the inventory that we have. So the lightning channel inventory is going to get passed in here. If there is a match with the first ingredient here and the first slot, 
then we're going to get true on this. And then if the second slot also matches with a given recipe, then we're going to get a true for this. And that is going to mean that we actually have a recipe in here. And the way we actually check for this is by doing recipe is present. And this would be called something like that. So there you go. So recipe dot if present and then I recipe. And then we basically evaluate some stuff in here. So everything inside of here is only called if the recipe is actually there. The last thing we want to call is actually mark dirty. We basically want to say, hey, something has changed in here. So let's make sure that that is called at the very end. And then we can think about the following. So item stack output is equal to I recipe, which is the I recipe get recipe output. So this simply gets us the output, whatever we actually want to craft. And now we can do a very particular and interesting thing. And we're going to basically ask for the weather. So we're going to say I recipe dot get weather because of course the great thing about this is that this i recipe is a lightning channel recipe so we can call the get weather method and we can say well if this is equal to weather dot uh, let's for example say clear at the moment and and this is the cool thing world dot is raining is false it is clear so it's sunny and the actual recipe requires it to be sunny then we can do stuff and what we're going to do is we're basically just going to call this right here and this is something that we could probably actually refactor and make into a different method. So we can extract a method here and we can call this, for example, craft the item, something like that. And then the great thing is that we can simply copy this three times. We want to evaluate if the weather is then rain and then if the world is raining. And then here we want to say is thundering and then is this thundering. And we always want to craft the item there because, of course, the item crafting in this case is going to be basically always the same. We always want to extract the two items and then insert it into the bottom slot. If I were to remake the lightning channeler again, I would probably add an output slot in this case. But I got to be honest, this isn't the worst thing ever. This is actually totally fine. And this will also work. What's really important here is that the if present method is only called once the actual inventory actually matches with one of the recipes inside of the recipes folder here in our data folder. Uh, and actually this has been done. Now we also of course need to add the uh, strike lightning method here when we craft an item that is in a thunderstorm. So strike lightning, we want to call this. We can of course then also think about, for example, adding some water effects here when it's raining or I don't know, like adding some maybe particle effects when uh, we are actually clear. So that could also be a thing that you could do in theory for our purposes. We're not going to do that in at this moment, but that is something that you could do in theory. Right now, let me copy over two recipes that I've already prepared here and we'll take a look at uh, those. So one of the ones is of course going to be the Firestone from Chandler. And as you can see, it has the type tutorial mod lightning. So this is exactly what has been given here. So the lightning serializer, it needs to be the name lightning. So this is exactly this. And as you can see, it has a field called weather, which is thundering in this case. Now for our ingredients, it actually, the order here is important. So the top one is of course what you need to put in the top slot. And the bottom one is what you need to put in the bottom slot. And then instead of a result, we have an output and that is going to be the Firestone in this case. So this is the this is something that we've already seen before. And then this is the Amethyst hole from Chandler. So we basically put in an Amethyst, we put in a stick and then a hole gets output and the weather for that needs to be clear. So there's a lot of things to really do. But overall, now, in theory, we could add any type of recipe that we want just with a JSON file. And the great thing is that, for example, modpack makers could very easily add their own recipes to our tile entities, making them even more compatible with other mods in big mod packs, which is going to be really, really awesome. We can basically delete the lightning has struck method. And what we also want to do is the is item valid method. We simply want to return true here because I actually don't want to track. Well, what can we add here? Simply return true. This is going to be totally fine as well. And now I actually think that we can see whether or not it works. All right, we found us back in Minecraft once more and let's see. So I can open the channel and in theory, I should be able to place the stick in the bottom one and an amethyst because right now it is clear. As you can see, it's not raining or anything. And if I put in the amethyst here, the stick at the bottom should turn into a hoe. There it is, the amethyst hoe. It has actually worked. And then I can also do the same with the glass pane and the amethyst. But of course, it's not raining at the moment or it's not thundering. 
So we can basically change the weather to thunder. And then as soon as the thunder really registers, it's going to strike down. There it is. And there is the firestone. So isn't that just absolutely awesome that that works? And I can, of course, put in the glass pane again and then the amethyst. And it's just going to it's just going to work immediately afterwards. There's, of course, something to be said about putting in a delay or something similar like that. But overall, this is really cool. And I can, of course, also show you, as you can see, this the amethyst hole here doesn't craft because, of course, we are not clear. So I can once again do a weather clear. And then once the weather is clear, then you can see. And there it is. And then the amethyst hole actually crafts. Now, isn't that just awesome? I, I really think it is. If I were to redesign the GUI with the recipes in mind, I would probably change this to display any weather, which makes a little more sense. I would maybe also think about adding a tooltip on here to say, hey, it's currently this weather. So that would be kind of nice. The real issue, of course, is man, I mean, thinking about this, uh, you know, let's say, say we add like a hundred recipes to for the lightning channeler. However, would we, you know, keep track of what we can, what we can craft with this, you know? Well, next tutorial, we'll talk about JEI integration. I hope you're excited for that because it really is very exciting. But that would be it for this tutorial right here. I genuinely hope you found this useful and you learned something new. I would, of course, appreciate a like if you did and subscribe for more tutorials just like this. And I'll see you next time when we tackle JEI integration. So, yeah.